Hi, my name is Brendan Jones, and today I'm going to convince you that I have the perfect three-step process to building the perfect workout. So what we're going to do today is we're going to go over three steps that I have found the most effective in building the perfect workout for whatever your goal is. So let's go ahead and get started. And every single good workout starts by setting goals. So as you can see right here, we're going to talk about what it looks like to set goals in building the perfect workout. So the first thing you need to look at is the different types of goals. So one of the goals that you may be looking at is a physical goal. An example of a physical goal could be weight management, so trying to gain weight or lose weight or just simply maintain weight. The other one could be strength. So maybe you just have a physical goal to get stronger, so get physically stronger. The next one could be hypertrophy. Now, hypertrophy is just a fancy word for actually enlarging your muscle organs. So if you want to just get to where you have bigger muscles, that would be a hypertrophy goal. The next thing is cardiovascular and then some other ones too. We're really just making sure that your physical health on the inside is as good as it looks on the outside. It could be another physical goal. Now, that's one type of goal. Another type of goal could be a mental goal. So for some people, they go to the gym and they set a mental goal to relieve stress, for example. Another one could be self-esteem. So maybe they just want to have a better mental picture of themselves. So when they look in the mirror, they're not depressed. They actually feel good about themselves. For other people, self-esteem wise, you just have more energy throughout the day and you feel better by yourself, so you carry yourself better. The next one could also be sleep patterns, which people don't realize that this is actually something that a lot of people do. When they work out, they can actually develop more healthy sleep patterns. So that's another example of a mental goal that they can set. A mental goal for me specifically is that relieving stress. I'm usually a little bit of an angrier person when I don't get to go to the gym consistently. So I relieve my stress at the gym. And then the last one we're gonna talk about today is a performance goal. So a performance basic goal. It could be an endurance goal where you're prepping for a marathon or a triathlon and you're trying to prep your endurance and you're trying to be able to perform for a long period of time. The next one could be another weightlifting goal. So weightlifting competitions, weightlifting performances. So getting to where you can lift that heavy and needed weight to win medals, to win money, whatever it is at that competition, but you're still performing. So it's a performance goal. And then the last one would have to do with any other competition. So whether it's CrossFit games or anything along those lines, whether it's a mud race or a Spartan race, then you can look at it as another performance goal. So those are the three types of goals <clears throat> that you can utilize when building the perfect workout. So it's the physical, mental, and performance-based goals. So you do that first step, and then the next step after setting a goal would be to pick a workout split. So there's a lot of things to consider when picking a workout split. The first thing to consider is, hey, what even is a workout split? And if you don't know what that is, that's okay. A workout split is basically what you would do to decide how many days you would go to the gym and then what muscle groups you would train each time you go to the gym. So let's look at it. Some things to consider when picking a workout split could be the days a week that are needed to actually hit your goals. So the goal we first set, you gotta realize, hey, what are is actually needed for me in the gym to hit this goal? And then also, when am I actually gonna be able to go to the gym? So that's the first thing you're gonna consider. The second thing you wanna consider when we're picking a workout split is what are the actual exercises that are required to meet my goal? And the third thing would be, hey, what's the frequency that I need to train those specific muscles in order to meet that goal? If you are able to answer those three questions, then you'll be able to pick an effective workout split. Now, let's look at some examples of workout splits. Now, I just picked some three-day splits. You can easily turn a three-day split into a six-day split by just simply repeating what we're gonna be talking about. And I'll even give you a variation or two of some five-day splits as well. But the first thing you look at is a push-pull leg split. So push-pull legs, so you do one day push muscles, one day pull muscles, and then a leg muscles, and then that's a three-day split. If you wanted to make that a six-day split, then you would go push-pull legs, push-pull legs, and just repeat it. But as you go down here, you can also see there's a chest and back, and arms, and a legs split. And then the last one on there is an upper body, a lower body, and a cardio split. So let's say you want to do a five-day split. Then you could do a push-pull legs, and then an upper body and a lower body day. Rotating all of that kind of stuff can help you build a more effective workout and pick the perfect workout split. And like I said, once you set that goal, you'll know what kind of workout split you need to get 
based on what you have been doing your research on in building that workout so and picking those goals so we're going to set a goal then we're going to pick the workout split and then what we're going to do next makes a lot of sense we're going to actually build the physical workout so what you're going to do whenever you're building the physical workout the first thing you're going to do is you're going to determine the time that you have for the workout so determine if it needs to be a 30 minute workout 45 minute workout and so on so what the second thing you're going to do is you're going to choose a good warm-up to get the blood flowing. My personal favorite is jumping rope. So pick a warm-up to get the blood flowing. Say you're doing a chest day, crank out some push-ups, but get that blood flowing. The thing you're going to do after that is you're going to actually choose the type of exercises and the amount of exercises that you need to do. So if you do strength training, you're probably going to do less exercises and maybe some more sets of those exercises. So maybe like five reps, uh, but five different sets is what you do for that. And so determining what you need <clears throat> for your goal, it will also go inside with determining the correct sets and reps for those each exercises as well. And the last thing you're gonna do in building that workout is then incorporate rest in between sets that will align with your goal. <clears throat> Every goal requires a different type of rest. So figuring out what you need in that goal is very important. So after you build the workout, then that will allow you to build the perfect workout. So what I want to do is I want to go over this example workout that I made that is a very, very effective workout. So you are here we've got the goal is hypertrophy. So stretching those muscle organs. The duration that's available for the workout is 45 minutes. Then you go straight into what the warm-up is. It's a five minute warm-up. You're going to stretch for three of those minutes. You're going to jump rope for a minute and a half and then you're gonna do 25 push-ups because you can see those push-ups are gonna get us warmed up because the workout type is a push day. And a push day just means that we're gonna work out our chest muscles and our tricep muscles. So that's what we're doing in terms of the workout type. And then whenever you build those exercises in line with what would help you with hypertrophy, you can see right here for bench press, four sets of 10, the tricep push down, chest flies, tricep pull down, and a couple other exercises, all with the correct sets and reps needed for that exercise. And then at the bottom right here in the asterisk, you can see that there's one minute rest in between each exercise and a 30 second rest in between each set. So this is a three step process that will get you to have the most effective workouts that you can possibly have. So I would encourage you to use this because it is very, very effective. Thank you for your time.